Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can see this. Can give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. Just going to hide the floating meeting controls. Good morning. My name is Melody DeLapp. I am an administrative assistant in the Chancellor's Office on the Everett campus in uh, Everett, Washington. And oh, there we go. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about growing dahlias from spring to winter and all the things that you need to do in between. I'm a proud Kugelam and benefactor of Morgan Horses. It's my boy Key to the Kingdom you see there in the photo. I am not a master gardener, but I do have 30 years experience of raised bed organic gardening. I, I am, oh boy, my PowerPoint is also giving me, there we go. I'm new to flowers. I've been growing veggies for quite a long time, but flowers were new to me. I purchased a few tubers from Fred Meyer a few years ago, and they were so much fun and they were so wonderful that um, I just kept growing more and more. So many of the same principles apply to growing dahlias as, a, as they as do to vegetables. <clears throat> you need good soil, sunshine, water, pest control, maintenance, and of course you need to enjoy your time in the garden. Dahlias are very easy to grow and they will yield flowers for you from the time they start blooming about mid-July right up until the first frost. I'll say this a few times today, they need full sun and they need well-drained soil. They will grow in clay-like soil, so if you um, do have soil like that, add a little bit of sand or peat moss, that'll help them a lot. And they are hardy to zone eight. They're very popular. They're on the July 2020 front cover of Real Simple. It's real simple. Uh, they are wonderful because they come in such a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. So here are a few examples. Uh, cac this was a cactus and semi-cactus. They come in decorative. Pom-pom and ball are very round. <clears throat> Anemone and collar red have very distinctive features. Mignon and single dahlias are simple and have lovely colors. I love the orchid dahlias. They're a lot of fun. And of course, the peony dahlias are beautiful too. Water lily is another favorite of mine. And then there are the dinner plate dahlias, which come in all shapes and sizes, just like people. Um, dinner plate dahlias refer more to the size than the classification. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can get your plants and tubers from a variety of places, as you can see here. Uh, I was very surprised when I walked into the feed store a few months ago and found one of my favorite dahlia tubers, which I hadn't been able to find anywhere else there. <clears throat> so that was, I was able to add that to my list. I have a few friends that grow dahlias as well, and every year we host a dahlia tuber exchange in the spring, so it's one of my favorite ways to get new tubers. Choosing your plants, it's completely a personal choice. Uh, depends upon the colors that you want. And on the height, uh, they grow from very short to very tall and all the way in between. <clears throat> you may want to pick your plant based on the size of the bloom and what you're going to use it for. Will it be a yard, something to make your yard beautiful, or will you be using them to, for bouquets? Also depends upon the amount of space you have. Are you going to put them on your deck in a pot? Or are they going to go in a corner of your yard? Or are you lucky enough to have a farm and you can just put them out there in the field? When to plant is, of course, like everything else, very important. They can go directly into the ground after all danger of frost has passed. A good rule of thumb is to put them in the ground about the same time you would put your tomatoes in the ground. If you want to get a head start on your blooms, just like with seed starting for your vegetables, you can start your tubers a little bit earlier, um, putting them in a one gallon pot and then keeping them in a location that's well lit. But do not give them too much water. They are. Um, it will rot easily. <clears throat> Excuse me. They can be planted late, as late as mid-June in most parts of the country. And again, good sun, good drainage, very important. Just like with vegetables, which I talked about last week, plants are only as good as the soil that they're planted in. So it's important to know what's going on with your soil and to test it. And there's very easy and economic soil testing kits out there. Dahlias like their pH between 6.5 and 7.0. Oh. 
You can add other things to the soil as needed. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are important to your plants, but particularly with flowers and with dahlias, phosphorus is a, is a more essential nutrient for them. You can see with these fertilizers, the middle number, which indicates the number of phosphorus parts per, I think it's pound, uh, is the higher number. So that's why these are better for flowers. How do you plant your tubers? It's, of course, not as hard as anyone might think. Tubers also come in many different shapes and sizes. I start mine as early as possible in the one gallon pot. So uh, these tubers were already sprouting just a little bit when I pulled them out of storage and I just put them in the pot. And of course I included the label, but I didn't add any water for quite a while. I just let them sit in the dirt in a warm place with some light, with a light source. After about a month, um, I usually see something I do. I, after about two to three weeks, I'll give them a little bit of water. And then I start to see the sprouts coming up. When the weather warms up, I'll move them outside, but I make sure to keep them out of the rain. As you can see, I have put a little plant marker label in here, which included the variety's name. I also include where I got it from, the grower, and whether or not there was an eye sprouting on the tuber when I put it into the pot. Once all danger of frost is passed, they're ready to go in the ground, so gather everything up. This is from this year's planting. I just took them all to the garden. I garden in a local pea patch. This is the bed they went into, um, 10 by 25 feet. We keep it covered over the winter to keep the weeds away. We added three yards of compost in April, rototilled it in, and then covered it back up with plastic because the weeds, of course, will go crazy if we let them. We dig our path. Uh, we just dig a path by throwing dirt onto the bed and then smoothing it out. And this year we were not able to get the values until June 1st. A little tip here, sometimes we forget to bring the measuring tape with us. So we have marked our shovel at the three foot width. So if we need to make our bed the same um, width all the way down, we can at least use our shovel. I want to throw that in there, just a little gardening tip for you. Dahlias will also need a uh, support. So I just use a single post. I believe it's rebar, I buy it at the garden center. So you wanna have those on hand as you start to plant. And here you can see this bed is ready to go. So it's all smoothed out and I've dug a hole. It's about six to eight inches deep. And I've added a little phosphorus. I add about two to three tablespoons of phosphorus or bone meal, as you can see here. And then I pour some, I put some dirt on top of that and I mix it in really well. Shout out for knee pads, kneeling pads. They're very helpful. I use mine all the time, whether I'm kneeling or sitting in the garden. It's especially nice if the ground is damp, uh, you can sit on it and keep yourself dry. So once the hole is dug, you can see on the left there, then I plant my post and I just push it down. I don't pound it in because as you can see, this one got a little bit bowed. Uh, it does not need to be pounded in because it will bend. I just push it down until there's no more resistance. And then I get out my tuber and you can see this one has a little bit of a sprout. And I know it's ready to go. And this one had a, it wasn't too vigorous yet. There was just a little bit of a root system in there and it, all the dirt fell away as soon as I took it out of the pot. But that gave me a chance to take some pictures and show you this tuber um, this is the same tuber in both picture. I just added, set, set it upon a two by two for reference. And you can see it's, uh, it's growing and ready to go in the ground. So I put it in, covered it with dirt, and I'm ready to move on to the next one. Now I get out my measuring tape and I measure from the little sprout three feet to the other hole, to the next hole, ne to the hole next to it. Um, dahlias like to be about three feet apart. It's a little bit closer, but a good rule of thumb is to plant them three feet apart. This was a bigger one. Um, a lot had a lot more growth going on, much healthier root system. And put it in the ground and ready to add the next one. Sometimes your tubers will have more than um, one tuber when you buy it from a grower. I don't recommend taking them apart. Um, they need, one tuber is sufficient, but sometimes they're kept together because they need a woody part of the stem attached to them still in order to grow into a bush. And so I trust that the grower has left that on there for a reason. After they've been planted, I use the um, 
heel of my palm to push the dirt down and to create a moat around each plant, which you can see here. It makes it easier for them to get a drink of water, especially in early spring. Don't overwater them. They still, even when they're very young, there, there's a chance of the tuber getting a little too wet and rotting out. So two and a half hours later, we planted all 20 tubers. And last step before I walk away is to, oh, I gave them a drink of water, and then I added sluggo. Slugs and snails love dahlias, and it, you have to be really vigilant, especially very early on, because they will not give your plant a chance to grow. So I always put slug bait out. I also indicate exactly where I planted which variety, and that becomes more important when they start blooming, and I want to know exactly which one I have and which one I don't want to grow again next year. I always keep the labels of every tuber I grow. It contains a lot of information that um, I want to refer back to. This picture came, it was actually from last year. The plants that I planted June 1st are not quite this big yet, but um, usually within three to four weeks, you should see about this much growth. And then after five to six weeks, they should be about this tall. <clears throat> and then at six to eight weeks later, you'll start to see blooms depending on the variety. Some varieties bloom early, others mid and some late. This is one of my favorites, the Holly Hill Spanish Dancer. And then by early August, mid-August, all of your plants should be blooming and they will continue to do so right up until the first frost. And so here are just a few pictures from last summer. Lots of beautiful flowers. I, I like to grow them, I like to share them. Lavender Perfection is one of my favorites. Groovy was a freebie from the grower. I didn't think I'd like it, but it turned out to be quite pretty. Candy cane on the right is one of my favorites. Someone asked me last year, do you grow cougar colors on purpose? I said, of course. Marlene Joy is another favorite. These are both the same dahlia bush. I don't believe this is the same flower. I, honestly, I can't remember if this was the same flower just a few weeks, few, probably about two weeks apart. I don't always get to cut them. So the one on the left is in its prime. The one one on the right is, it, they do fade, and this is how it looks then, still very pretty. The picture on the right I took, this little bee was actually napping. Um, he was in there for about 30 minutes, and he didn't move at all, and I, at first I thought, oh, that's so sad, he died in the flower. But he was napping, he flew away. I thought that was a lot of fun. A lot of bees come to the garden, is an, that's another reason I grow flowers, it helps all my vegetables too. Watering and fertilizing, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the beginning, like I said before, they don't need a lot of water, but as they get bigger, of course, they will need a lot more. I put my soaker hoses in early. I prefer soaker hoses because they get a longer, deeper drink. The, I don't lose as much water to evaporation. I can set them up to on a timer to water at any time. I can water while I'm working in the tomato. I can weed the tomatoes while my dahlias are being watered. And then I can reuse these components year after year. They're a little bit expensive to start, um, but they were a 50-foot hose was on sale at my local Fred Meyer for, I think, $12 last week. And I take very good care of them and use them year after year. Watering wand or a sprinkler are also another way to go. They're less expensive, um, just a hose and a nozzle or the sprinkle and the hose, sprinkler head and the hose. It is time consuming. Sometimes but as, as you get into the middle of the season, it's really a superficial watering because so much of the water ends up on the leaves and doesn't get down to the ground. Uh, you have more evaporation and of course with the wet leaves, you have more opportunity for disease. Fertilizing again, uh, just use them as directed. Don't overuse them. About once a month should be enough. Uh, for pest control, a healthy plant can fend off most insect invasions. And your plant will be healthy if it's in the right location, if it has the right nutrients in the soil, it's getting enough sunshine and water. If you do have insects, they're most likely to be aphids, spider mites, thrips, uh, slugs and snails, or earwigs. Earwigs do eat aphids, so I try to live with them, um, but they will also eat the dahlia. Slugs and snails, as I said before, they love dahlias, so here are a few different ways that you can um, deter them organically. The snail trap on the right, that's beer in the jar buried in the ground. You just have to change it regularly. 
Um, Sleco is, has iron phosphate. Um, it will not hurt your animals if they happen to ingest it or yourself for some reason, if you end up with a little bit inside of you. And then the diatomaceous earth is also good for other kinds of insects too. I like the natural method. These ladybugs and praying mantis were on sale. I bought some um, about a week ago and I released the ladybugs into my garden two nights ago. And I, you're supposed to water your garden and then release them in the early evening. And I had sort of forgotten about the watering part. And I that lesson came home to me because I, I had put the soaker hoses on and an hour, half an hour later, I released the ladybugs and I dropped almost the entire bag on the first tomato plant. And I thought, oh darn it. So I, I finished tossing them around a few other tomatoes. That took me about a minute. When I came back, all, oh, that's ladybug larva. All the ladybugs had migrated to the soaker hoses. They were very thirsty. Um, it was really an interesting sight to see how they just, they just wanted water. They've been in that bag who knows how long. So take care of your ladybugs and they'll take care of you. You can make your own insecticidal soap to deal with insects. Uh, you can also purchase it. You can use a blast of water from the hose or you can use neem oil. I always keep neem oil on hand because it's good for so many different things in the garden. Maintaining your plants, if you want to have long stems, you're gonna cut off those first two buds on the branch. Um, that will help the middle one grow up taller. If you leave them on, oftentimes the flowers will get lost in the bush. <clears throat> you won't see them as well. You also want to make sure you tie your dahlia to that stake early on in the season to help it get started, um, get a good start. And then as the bush gets taller, you'll want to I only tie one or two more times to the state, and that seems to be sufficient in my garden. You do want to deadhead your plants. You won't always be able to cut them all for bouquets. That helps keep bugs away. It also helps your plant continue to grow and keep producing flowers. If you're in a hurry, just snip them off. But if you're not in a hurry, cut all the way back to the main stem, and that will stimulate more growth on your plant. Bouquets are the reason that I grow dahlias. I like sharing them with my friends. I like them all over my home and on my front porch and on my back deck. <clears throat> you do want to cut early in the morning. Uh, you have less insects come into the house with you. Uh, just snip with pruners or scissors. And choose flowers that are opened or nearly opened. If you cut the buds, they will not open once they're in a vase. Dahlias look great alone or they go well with a variety of annuals extend their time in the vase, change the water every two days. At the end of the season, your dahlias will look like this after the first frost. This is the morning after our first frost last year. And I had, um, throughout the season, I had taken pictures of each flower, printed it, laminated it, and written the name of the variety on the picture. And then I tied them with a little bit of twine to the base of each stalk so that I knew exactly what was what. Because at this point, even though I have my good map, my good um, written information, sometimes it's still hard to tell which plant is which. So you can either leave them like that. There's a chance that they will grow back the following spring. But as I have said, they are very susceptible to rotting and most of the time, my tubers end up just rotting in the soil. So you can purchase new ones and start all over again next spring. However, if you want to try, you can dig them up. And what you will find is that instead of one or two tubers, you now, ha you now have six to eight tubers that you can keep um, for the next year. So you can rinse the dirt off of your tubers, which is what I did last year, or you can leave the dirt on I think I prefer to leave the dirt on. The tubers seem to store better with a little bit of dirt around them. I store them on a bed of vermiculite and sawdust. That helps also keep moisture out. Um, but the other problem you can run into when you store them over the winter is then they can also dry out and they start to get wrinkly and you need to spritz them with just a little bit of water. So after I dug them up, I stored them upside down to help them dry out and then I put them into their, their bed of sawdust and vermiculite. In the spring, when you're ready to cut them apart, you just wanna make sure that you leave part of the woody stem on because that, as you can see from the picture on the right especially, is where the sprouts will come up. This is another picture of how I stored them over the winter. 
I believe it's worth it. It probably seems like a lot of work to some of you, but I um, really enjoy my flowers. I enjoy sharing and I enjoy having them to look at. And I just heartily recommend trying dahlias. Just try one. You can get more information from the American Dahlia Society. I had no idea how big dahlias are. Uh, in Washington State alone, there are all of these chapters of the Dahlia Society. It's crazy. Uh, if you hear some of my favorite suppliers, Dan's Dahlias is my favorite. He's a Coug, and he has a really interesting story. He started um, being interested in Dahlias when he was 10 years old. Dahlia Barn is in North Bend, Washington, and Eden Brothers is in North Carolina, but I've had very good success with their tubers that they've sent me. Thank you for coming today. If you want to contact me or have any questions, there's my contact information. And remember that you need to clean the dirt because life's too short to always have anything for nails. Thanks.